Oh, good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar topic, EU's new ELB directive and how it's driving circular economy and sustainability. So we request everyone to keep uh, yourself muted. And uh, we are recording this session and it will be shared uh, after the session is complete. At the end of this webinar, we will start a survey. Uh, we request you to pull that out and uh, help us improve from the next uh, webinars. <coughs> Excuse me. If you have any questions or comments, you can always uh, use the comment section and you can also directly write to us at uh, compliance at apengineering.com form and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, today we have two speakers. Uh, I'm Ranjini Vardarajan. I'm a manager in compliance division and I have with me uh, Vigneshwar, who's a senior uh, engineer in regulatory compliance. Okay, before we get uh, into the webinar, I'd like to speak a few words about uh, APEA. So we've been there for around uh, two decades and we have our offices in US, uh, EU and APAC. We are ISO 9001 and 27001 certified. We are also TSAC certified and we serve more than 350 customers across uh, the regions which I just spoke. And uh, we have uh, uh, services across uh, divisions like compliance, engineering, sourcing and technology. And um, because today we are uh, from the compliance team, we'd like to say that we offer services and also software uh, solutions and also turnkey solutions. And here you can see a list of uh, uh, regulations which we are uh, uh, currently serving our customers with. There are lots here, so I'm just going to mention a few, starting with IMDS, REACH, Prisca, Prop 65, ROHS, we also have a, a ESG um, and uh, we also work on uh, PFAS and uh, battery directives, SDS and GADS in, in short. Moving forward. And uh, this is the agenda for today. So uh, we'll speak on uh, what is uh, EU's updated uh, ELV regulations. That is an overview of uh, the latest regulation. And then we'll see how circular economy practices impact the automotive industry. And then we'll also look into extended producer responsibility in the ELV and uh, uh, how, um, how ELV recycling is becoming more and more innovative. And uh, we'll also speak on uh, consumer awareness and participation in the ELV directive, uh, followed by future developments. Okay, uh, I want to start a poll. Please answer the same. Thank you for your response. I'm closing the poll. And I'm uh, handing over the presentation to Vigneshwar. Vigneshwar, you can carry on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, hello everyone. This is Vignesh, senior engineer under the domain of regulatory compliance. And thanks for joining and participating in this webinar. And uh, I am here to provide you the interpretation of uh, EU's new ELV rules and uh, driving towards circular economy and sustainability and the merging of triple uh, R to ELV. Uh, before we directly go into the topic, uh, we'll just uh, look the definition and background of uh, ELVs. Uh, uh, 
Ranjini, can you go to the first slide? Yes, sure. Actually, this is second slide. Yeah, this is the first. Yeah, first we need to understand what is ELV. ELV is nothing but end of life vehicle. Uh, it is created by European Union. Uh, European Union rules to make the automotive sector circular to maximize the effective use of resources and to protect the environment. And uh, when ELV was evolved, uh, the first ELV directive was uh, proposed on 18 September 2000, and uh, the, the the law came into enforcement on 21st April 2002. And next slide. Yeah, this is a background of revised uh, EL, EL, ELV. Uh, the, the the updated ELV that we're gonna talk about is uh, reviewed from uh, 2021, and the ELV directive has been released by 13th of July this year, 2023. Uh, actually, what this proposal means, uh, this is uh, incorporating two, two uh, directive, which is uh, Directive 2053-EC on ELV and Directive 2005-64-EC, which is triple R uh, type approval motor vehicle. Next slide. Yeah, objective of, uh, what is the real objective of the our revised ELV directive, the new regulation for vehicle design, that is circular design, the revised ELV's motto is to protect environment, decarbonize production, and reduce raw material dependencies. This is all about the overview of uh, EU's ELV regulation. Now let's see how it's going to impact the, the manufacturer and uh, waste management operator. Next slide. Yeah, this is uh, the this is uh, how uh, how does this impact the vehicle manufacturer? First is uh, staying compliant. Staying compliant, uh, the manufacturer should more focus on uh, three R's. That is uh, three R R R R, and recycled content should be uh, examined and uh, evaluated during homologation process. And the second one is vehicle design and production. A uh, manufacturer should embrace vehicle circular design, which promotes uh, easy, easy recycling uh, during the vehicle production. And the third one is digital product process. Uh, the manufacturer has the responsibility to collect all the data from the entire supply chain and to ensure the sustainability and environment and recyclability attributes of the component. And uh, manufacturers uh, should disclose uh, uh, recyclability of material and uh, percentage of uh, recycled material used in the product. And the uh, last point is, uh, this is a very important uh, point. Uh, the before recycling process, the dismantling of the vehicle should be instructed, like uh, how to dismantle properly, uh, because in order to get the recoverability and high rate of recoverability and re reuse of the vehicle parts. Next slide. Yeah. This is uh, how to uh, reduce uh, dependency on raw material to promote the recyclate, recyclability process because reducing uh, the dependency on raw material will automatically improve the recyclability process. And the last point is uh, every, t every teams and members should take efforts on treat waste better at ELV stages of uh, wake. The second is how does this impact waste management operators? First one, uh, increase the revenues on recycled or uh, spare parts ma materials. And the second one, uh, investing in new technologies so that uh, they can promote the recyclability and uh, reusability. And what are the difficulties or challenges in ELV in implementing uh, into their uh, system? Uh, the first of all, uh, it is there is absence of uh, circular designs of production. And the second point is the waste treatment or handle in pure, poor quality. And the third point is import of critical raw material, uh, which uh, automatically decreases the recyclability. And this is uh, this is uh, another important point. In the EU, uh, one in three vehicles goes missing, which is uh, maybe it is illegally disposed or illegally exported to some other places and just disposed. So this is main point and. Uh, Fifth point is uh, the collaboration. The manufacturers and the recyclers should uh, cooperatively work and works on work on with the recyclers to manage this uh, issue. 
and, uh, and the next point is no financial accountability uh, there is no financially uh, accountable of that uh, elv vehicles and the final part final point is uh, vehicles like heavy heavy lorry trucks uh, motorcycles are not covered by elv in the existing existing elv directive Yeah, to overcome uh, all these challenges, uh, there there is the uh, EU has revised the ELV directive. The first one is promote circular design. Uh, promote circular design. Circular design is nothing but creating uh, durability of the material and uh, recycling products like uh, the materials which have already been used in in the older product so it can be recyclable and reusable and repairable so that it generates uh, zero waste. And this is called circular design. And uh, circular, uh, circular in uh, what is circular economies? We'll we'll just going through that, and we'll have a separate topic for that. We'll look into that. Uh, next one, uh, 25 percentage of the recycled material should present in uh, should be recycled uh, from the old old uh, existing cars, for example, vehicle. So this is minimum 25 percent that should be uh, recycled from the older vehicle and the third point is uh yeah improve the quality of uh, crm should be crms is critical raw material should be improved like plastic steels and aluminium and then <clears throat> yeah uh, fourth point is uh yeah a uh, producer should be accountable of all the vehicle after they become the waste the producer should uh take into con take into account of of their vehicles uh, once after the end of its life vehicles and uh, next point is uh, the quality of uh, the quality the quality of a recycled material by intensifying the recycler which is motivate the recycler to know about the quality of the recycled materials and then yeah last point uh, the, okay yeah the scope of covered vehicle to be expanded for example last in the last slide we have talked about there is no uh, scope for heavy trucks and uh, two wheelers motor bike etc so now it is uh, we have for all the heavy trucks that's is that is the last point next slide yeah yeah scope uh, yeah yeah this is the scope of the vehicle which we talked in the last point uh, m1 and n1 vehicles are already been used in the previous existing elv directive but now we have uh, additionally two two category of vehicles one is l l category is nothing but uh, motorbike mopeds and uh, quadricycles tricycles uh, which is not which is less than four tires uh, which is called uh, l category mopeds like that and uh, trucks buses and trailers are also including in this revised elv directive Yeah. economic impacts what is the ec economic impacts of a revised elv directive uh, annually uh, it will be reduced 1.12.3 million tons of co2 annually into 2035 which is equivalent to uh, 2.8 billion euro and uh, the strategic contribution of crms uh, is uh, 350 tons of rare earths by 2035 and expected 1500 tons by 2040 and it generates 1.8 billion net revenue in 2035 uh, which it, which includes uh, estimated revenue plus monetized value of co2 saving yeah uh, as we as i as i told uh, circular economy will be a separate topic now we're going to see about what circular economy is circular economy our uh, eu's uh, aims to uh, circular economy more cleaner europe and more competitive so this is their motto and uh, they want into in 2050 they aims to achieve climate neutrality target so that uh, the 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 climate should be neutrality neutrality targeted on that same level and uh, circular economy makes a model of uh, regenerative growth moving away from take make use dispose instead uh, they can they, they have to add recycle it into that because take make use dispose there is no word called recycle so instead they have to add or uh, recycle it into their uh, into that model so that it will uh, it, that it will evolve the circular economy and the third point is uh, as like other regulation circular economy concentrate more on minimizing the waste generation so that uh, uh, 
so that 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 will be uh, improved in the circular economy and uh, in the right side you have a tabular column or a previous slide uh, we have a tab yeah tabular column the the this is actually the circular economy is a new the, but the current linear economy increases the demand of natural resources so that will impact uh, human economic activities on environment and including on biodiversity so for example now 90% of biodiversity loss is caused by resource extraction and up to 80% of products uh, environmental impacts are determined at design phase itself so uh, and then the third point is uh, the current circular material use rate is just only 811.8% so we have to increase that and decrease that red color one and increase that green color one this is what uh, the tabular column announced next slide okay how how the circularity uh, linked with the revised dlv directive uh, this is nothing but uh, it helps to achieve a sustainable growth by uh, decoupling like uh, it, it 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 disengages from the natural resource like not to use that natural resources so that they can increase increase the recyclability rate so this is the first point and the second point is uh, it will help the european union to reduce the carbon footprint and uh, increase the circular material use rate so that in the coming decade they will be a uh, double its circular material use rate and the third point is uh, more, the creation of stronger and more uh, robust value chains uh, so that they can increase the circularity in ELV directly. Yeah, uh, we have uh, action plans uh, for circular economy. Uh, for that, the European Commission just adopted new circular economy action plan. This is CEAP. In March 2020, they have just developed. Uh, it is a part of EU deal, uh, EU, uh, EU green deal. Green deal is nothing but there will be a European green deal uh, striving to be uh, the first climate neutral continent uh, because uh, there will be some uh, changes in the climatic condition and uh, which, which, which impacts the environment so that uh, they want to neutralize all these things. So they have just created uh, example for the name called green deal Eco european Eco european uh, commission green deal so that their clim climate should be neutrally uh, same and the second point is essential uh, to achieve a 2050 climate neutrality target and halting biodiversity loss and the action plan offers initiative the cover of entire life cycle of products so uh, it should pro product designed to promote uh, circular economy process the reuse the, the reuse, reuse of the product should be promoted all over the action plan that is what the first point is and uh, is, en encourage the sustainable consumption and prevent waste and the final one is retained resource within the eu economy itself yeah next is uh, epr epr uh, the epr is nothing but uh, extended producer responsibility the producers have uh, more responsible on uh, till the post consumer stage that is dismantling stage they have that till that stage they are they should be responsible that is the name of the extended producer responsibility you can just see epr is defined as uh, environmental policy approach in which producers responsibility physical or financially for a product is extended to the post consumer state which is dismantling stage of the products life cycle this is the definition of the epr this was uh, inspired by oecd which is uh, organization for economic cooperation and development this is also a separate uh, regulation and the second point is uh, member state uh, may produce yeah this is uh, the the cost should be uh, the, the the cost required for the post consumer stage uh, for the epr should be responsible for the producer and distributor also uh, this is the second point and the third point is uh, yeah it, it uh, the member state may determine that uh, a product producer is responsible for extending their uh, effort towards reducing the environmental impacts and waste generation during the process this is uh, just to uh, make that the producer should be responsible on uh, less uh, environmental impact and waste generation less impact on waste less waste generation during the production and the fourth one is uh, re re encourage re circular design circular design is nothing but using the old uh, like uh, existing recycled parts or uh, reused parts this is a circular design so it, if it encourage that we can reduce the 
uh, end of life vehicle waste. And next slide. Yeah, impacts of EPR on automotive manufacture. What are all the impacts on uh, impacts of uh, EPR in automotive manufacture? Shifting responsibility. For example, uh, if the if the if the stay if the if the vehicle is at uh, post consumer stage, uh, that it is not only the downstream process. The downstream should be responsible for the dismantling process. It should be the top level management, like upstream. The vehicle who manufacture or producer should also be the responsible for uh, uh, EPR. So this is what the first point is. Both physically and economically, uh, they have to uh, responsible for that. This is the first point. And the second point is the product processes should be focused throughout the product chain so the foc uh, the focus on products the product should be uh, should be a uh, product processes th throughout the product chain it should be a uh, focused and the third point is uh, yeah uh, the manufacturers the producers or manufacturers need to evaluate the waste management uh, in their in their uh, production time itself that's what the third point is and the fourth point is uh, after the product is uh, recycled or re reused they have to the producer or manufacturer need to collect that uh, waste from the waste or recycled Thing, uh, should and should be reused in their newer vehicles and uh, increase the use of residual materials in production and the sixth point is sixth point is transparency transparency of uh, waste waste streams like uh, after uh, the pro waste is produced where it goes it should be uh, transparency to all the manufacturers and it should be uh, known by every uh, manufacturer yeah, fourth one is innovation in uh, ELV recycling, uh, emerging emerging technologies and the method of efficient vehicle recycling. What are all the innovative ideas that can be uh, used for ELV recycling? Uh, in many countries, they'll follow uh, different uh, methods for recycling, regardless of their legislative management system. But here are the few we, which we uh, disclosed here. First one is vehicle preparation. Uh, vehicle preparation is nothing but we need to uh, remove hazardous material and hazardous uh, uh, substance in that so that such as uh, in, in batteries for example lead and fluids maybe uh, some other thing and in tires maybe PFAS so these are all the substance that will be present in the materials like uh, present in the batteries and tires and fluids so it should be uh, removed in the it should be removed during the elv recycling and shredding shredding is nothing but it should be uh the for example if it is a long metal like door trim door or something like that it should be shredded into small pieces with using chain shredder uh that is that and the separation after just shredding into small pieces the, the metals and plastic will be in the same container and some of it has, it has to be removed separately with the magnet maybe so that it will it will be separately recycled or not together and the fourth one is after shredded and uh, separated material then the metals alone go on for the recycling process and it will make some uh, some product and the plastic will be makes uh, plastic can be used as a new consumer goods and the glasses uh, can be used separately for the bottles or jars for the different uh, applications and the final is dis disposal uh, any remaining material for example few materials cannot be re uh, recycled so for that uh, it should be uh, disposed in an environmentally friendly manner so that it won't affect the uh, environment and the health of the biodiversity maybe and uh, it, it shouldn't affect the humans also so this is the final point and next slide Ah, yeah. Oh, this is uh, what is the future of ELV recycling? Uh, how how the future of the ELV recycling should uh, should be? Uh, first point is circular economy. This is we have already uh, seen in a detailed manner. So I'm just I'm um, gonna overview it. Uh, ELV shouldn't be a uh, waste, and it should be considered as a pre-recycled product, and uh, it can reduce uh, reliance on uh, raw, raw sources raw material sources this is the first point and the second point is advanced recycle technology this is nothing but we have to find innovative ideas uh, 
to to make the recycling technology more effective like uh, balling and separation techniques and advanced material identification and sorting system so that dismantling technologies uh, will be efficiently done and uh, it can be useful for the uh, resource recovery rates so increase the re resource recovery rates also and the ev battery recycling uh, as we know uh, future is ev vehicles so uh, developing uh, efficient sustainability met uh, sorry a battery consists of uh, for example the ev battery as uh, lithium cobalt nickel uh, lead should be recovered from the battery and should be reused and make sustainability make sustainability and the process uh, should be uh, done after like recycling before the recycling dismantling process this process should be done so that uh, it won't affect the environment next slide and uh, the co the collaboration and partnership the cooperation sh uh, should be there between government manufacturer and uh, recycling facilities and uh, research institutions so that uh, they, they if they work together and make a law then uh, then the future of elv recycling will be i and that is what uh, elv also looking for and the fifth point is uh, policy and regulatory support uh, this is nothing but policies like EPR. EPR is that we, we have already seen extended uh, uh, producer responsibility and uh, the policies like uh, circular economy should involve uh, in I rate of uh, recycling and uh, the, the, the law should be the policy and the regulatory law should be uh, very strict so that uh, they won't dispose the ELVs in the uh, land or uh, environment with without any concern so it should be strictly uh, regulated with the uh, laws yeah uh, ranjini yeah, thanks for your time ignishwar um, okay, i'll carry you forward for the next uh, slides uh, so you. um right now we're going to see about com consumer awareness and their participation and uh, since uh, elv has been revised it is important to educate uh, our end consumers also at the same time apart from uh, uh, you know just telling them a new directive is out there so we have to end uh, we are encouraging participation by education that is the first strategy so we will um, help uh, the end consumers know how uh, they should do recycling for example uh, if they already have a car, they have purchased a car, then they do have airbags. They can dispose them. They, they can know where to go and dispose them if uh, uh, need arises. And the second thing is like uh, this entire consumer awareness is all only when their consumers are aware, they are more, uh, they will demand more eco-friendly products. So it is vice versa. So as we educate, uh, uh, educate our end uh, consumers on ELV, and then there is also the demand or increase in more eco-friendly eco products, which allows companies to adopt more sustainable practices. So this education is both ways. One uh, on one end they benefit, and because of the increase of demand, and the industries will have to adopt to sustainable practices, um, or else uh, like adopt to uh, better ELV practices. Just moving forward. So, and the other thing is uh, to educate uh, customers on recycling and disposal, uh, because we saw how uh, not only the downstream is responsible for, uh, uh, you know, waste uh, or, uh, you know, reuse recycling methods, and also the upstream uh, comes into play right now. So they also need to be aware of how to uh, uh, dispose and how to uh, recycle. So if we can educate them on how to remove the tires and how to remove batteries, then how do you uh, depollute a vehicle? And if they are going to, um, I mean, before scrapping it off, they need to depollute the vehicle. They have to remove all the transmission fluid, in engine oil, coolant, and make sure they are safely disposed of. So we have to talk to them, uh, the upstream uh, customers also about this. Uh, then, as I mentioned, it's not airbag is not only for uh, the end consumer, but it's also for the upstream. So they need to know how to remove and dispose it and uh, we can also educate them on how to dismantle the vehicles uh, because with uh, uh, the introduction of this new ELV directive there is going to be much more documentation of how to dismantle the entire product so this is going to be really helpful and then we'll also uh, educate them on how to sort and segregate the materials um, 
moving forward. So um, we have just seen a, a high level summary of what's happening in the new and uh, revised DLB directives. But of course, there is always uh, room for improvement. And uh, this is just a proposal. And this is what uh, we can foresee in the future. And one thing is an expected um, increase in ELV uh, because there is a lot of uh, uh, growing vehicle population uh, globally. So we can expect that many countries will start adopting uh, ELV directives. And uh, uh, countries with uh, already uh, ELV recycling systems or else like already ELV in place, they should understand that it is important to enforce uh, the um, uh, regulation uh, in, within their uh, country. So it's not only about making proposals, it's also important to enforce them. And uh, we will also we can also see that there are going to be new technology, uh, uh, new technology and new techniques for extracting uh, materials actually, uh, because uh, so far uh, as we saw prior, we always used to you know dump. Uh, you know, uh, dump all the scrap in the landfilling. That's how it was done mostly. But right now, because of the ELB directive, so there is more importance based on how um, materials are going to be extracted because they're going to reuse all these materials. So uh, there's going to be a lot of advancements in this area. So we are seeing that one. And then uh, ELB is not only uh, restricted to EU. So um, uh, countries like India also uh, uh, are uh, planning to adopt ELV, which means that uh, there has to be uh, um, standardization of the ELV framework uh, internationally. So that will also happen shortly. And then we also have, uh, because it's going to be a lot about the circular design uh, the uh, and to consider what is going uh, inside uh, each and every component uh, and to make it more, uh, um, uh, you know, user friendly or is a disposal friendly uh, right at the end. Uh, so there's going to Computer, computerization of uh, new models of automobiles so uh, that will also go up so the design aspect will uh, have a lot of importance when it comes to the future developments and um, just moving forward to the next slide so in short this is what we've seen for today so what are the revised uh, ELV directive uh, what was this impact and uh, what challenges uh, are there when it comes to implementing ELV and how uh, the previous ELV and how the revised ELV is going to help us overcome all those challenges. And uh, we also look down to circular economy principles and how it is going to uh, promote sustainability and also work in tandem with the ELV directive. And the third, we also saw about uh, extended product responsibility and uh, how um, uh, you know the upstream uh, manufacturers are also called to um, <clears throat> be more responsible for uh, uh, what the, the materials and the components and the products that go in during the vehicle manufacturing and also to be more accountable uh, during the disposal and also financially. That's what we saw. Uh, saw. And then uh, we also saw uh, how, uh, you know, emerging technologies is going to impact the recycling. And then we, sh uh, uh, we saw how, you know, in a, at a high level, how to educate the customers and how to educate the um, uh, consumers also at the same time and then we saw you know where uh, this ELV directive is going to go so what are the impacts of ELV in the near future so this is a short summary of what whatever we have seen and uh, I'd like to uh, speak two minutes on how APA can be of help as we all know IMDS is uh, used uh, by all the automotive manufacturers to get in their uh, uh, component and substance information and also know what hazardous information uh, material is present and uh, APA is offering is one of the largest um, solutions provider for IMDS <clears throat> uh, and we also uh, not only we offer our services um, uh, to help you manage your uh, component information or uh, uh, you know substance information in IMDS we also have um, uh, a software called MDS Express uh, which is used for uh, automating the entire uh, reporting process and including the IMDS uh, tree structure creation which will help you uh, get your work done easily without errors because IMD is very key when it comes to ELV and uh, we are making sure that we are going ELV compliant um, 
uh, right with the IMDS. And, and uh, in a, from IMDS version 14.0, which was released, we also have the flexibility or ability to uh, enter recycle it information. So this gives more added advantage because we can also uh, make sure that we are uh, readily compliant with the new ELV directives that will be in place. Uh, because uh, uh, entering recycled information in IMDS, getting the tree right, making sure that uh, uh, you know you have all your uh, substance and material related information uh, with respect to uh, your vehicle is very very important and crucial because data is going to play a very key role uh, in this entire ELV process. Uh, there is tons to speak about it um, uh, because each and every component that goes in must actually come up with a uh, must must be compliant also with the digital product passport, which means uh, from end to end there's going to be a lot of data which needs to be managed, and that's where we come in. Not only with our um, uh, knowledge uh, with IMDS for the last 20 years, but also providing uh, software solutions which can help you, uh, you know, do all this uh, or do all this uh, data work in a considerable uh, amount of time quickly and efficiently. And there's uh, something more that's coming up from our end. I mean, that's a hush hush project for now. Uh, so we are also developing a in-house system which will be able to house your IMDS data so that you can uh, go and uh, uh, perform validations and uh, manipulate your data and then finally send the right data after it's validated back into the IMDS system. So that's up in place and I'm just moving over. And apart from not just, uh, we don't focus uh, just on IMDS, but there are a host of uh, other compliance software that we have. Um, as uh, we saw Vignesh was speaking on, uh, <clears throat> you know, how battery has to be disposed or is, you know, reused and recycled. We saw that it's using cobalt and lithium. And so that's where the conflict minerals uh, comes in actually. So uh, <clears throat> it's not just about the conflict minerals, uh, but uh, Autogen CM is a software which can take which can take care of all the mineral uh, related regulations. Uh, so we can, uh, uh, so that your uh, supply chain due diligence will also be in proper place. And uh, I also already, already spoke to you on uh, MDS Express, which is a software uh, that's used uh, along with uh, IMDS. And then you have uh, a compliance management platform called GreenCheck that, uh, I mean, it's like, it's one of my favorite tools um, being a part of APA. It's like a platform where I can, uh, you know, I can have reach ROHS, Disca, Prop 65, name the regulation and we have that regulation in and we'll be able to manage uh, all the regulations right from a single place, uh, get the uh, easy reports and validate it and also do the declaration at the same time. You also have uh, uh, volatile organic, uh, <coughs> excuse me, volatile organic chemical compliance software. And uh, uh, we have another tool for sustainability. We, are, we have been moving into sustainability software since uh, the start of 2023, and it's called ESG HQ. So that's going to take care of all the regulations uh, in the uh, ESG spectrum. I should say spectrum because ESG is just diversifying a lot, uh, not only into bio biodiversity, and then there are newer regulations uh, coming forward. So uh, these are some of the softwares which can um, help you. And uh, in case any of you is looking for, if one of you is looking forward uh, to, uh, you know, go in with uh, the new ELV director or trying to implement them, please do reach out to us. We'll be always there to support and help you. Moving forward. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, I hope so you have. Uh, so please uh, use the comment section to, um, in your questions and we'll get back to you. I'll wait for some time and you can ask your questions if any. Okay, uh, Vigneshwar, we have a question. Uh, so the question is, uh, okay, so we are speaking about this new ELV director and uh, uh, yeah, the participant is asking, how is this going to impact a uh, customer? Uh, okay, vehicle manufacturer, right? Yeah, a vehicle manufacturer. Uh, how it's actually going to impact them in terms of revenue? Okay, for example, uh, if you're going to manufacture with the circular uh, design, 
so the, the this will lead to the uh, modest increase in price uh, uh maybe uh, some euros so for per, before purchasing a new vehicle there will be little increase price in uh, of the new vehicle but uh, in the in the in the uh, prolonged time uh, this will be uh, useful for more affordable in maintenance uh, and the service life of that uh, vehicle Hope we answered your question. Any other questions that we can take in for now? Okay, I'm giving another minute. Questions are welcome. No other questions uh, from the participants. So I think uh, it's time we end the session and uh, uh, as we exit this webinar, uh, you will be uh, shown a survey. Please do fill that out and uh, let us know how the webinar was. And uh, in case of any questions or as you have any queries, uh, please reach out to us. We have uh, uh, given our uh, website address and our uh, email ID. We will send over this presentation to you. You can always write to us. You can always reach us out and we, our experts will come back to you. And um, in case you want to uh, have a demo of our services in detail you can always reach out to us thank you so much for your time